Duffy, Chris Lemon, Nora Dunn, Robert Hayes, and Professor Irwin Corey. Sex, shock, and censorship in the 90s. Premiering Friday, September 10th at 10.30 p.m., 9.30 Central, only on Showtime. Well, it's night number three of Emmanuel Week here on Showtime, and I'm Joe Bob Briggs. And if you're just tuning in for the first time to this week-long celebration of naked women that'll do anything, then you might be wondering, first of all, would a major cable network really do something this sleazy? And secondly, what have I missed? Well, unfortunately, you've missed a whole lot. You've missed Emmanuel, Queen of the Desert, Emmanuel's Amazon Adventure, Emmanuel in the Hood, and Emmanuel Goes to Omaha. But you still have three more nights to sit there on your couch wasting your life by watching the Showtime Emmanuel Week celebration. And, of course, you can always deny the next morning that you actually watch these movies. The best thing to do, actually, is just deny it to yourself. Just act like it never happened, and by noon, 1 o'clock, you'll believe that you did not spend two hours of your life watching Emmanuel in the Orient. I'm out of luck, though. People can see I'm sitting here like an idiot. I'm not only watching the movies, I'm actually talking about the plots. You know how many people in history have discussed the plots of Emmanuel movies? One. That's how pitiful it is. Anyhow, for those scholars out there who have been following my description of Emmanuel history this week, tonight's movie is... Emmanuel in the Orient, starring Chai Lee, this Hong Kong actress who only made one Emmanuel movie, and this is it. And uh, now that I think about it, she might not even be aware that she made an Emmanuel movie, because they don't call her Emmanuel in the movie. This is one of those mid-80s things, and by this time they were slapping the name Emmanuel on any movie that had any remote resemblance to the Emmanuel plot. Why were they doing that? The same reason Showtime shows these movies over and over and over again. Because you guys will fall for it every dang time. So this one coming up actually has four things that should always be included in any decent Emmanuel flick. One, you need plenty of strip joints and massage parlors, especially when you're in Hong Kong or Bangkok. And this one is Hong Kong. Two, you must always have one naked bath scene. It can be in a waterfall, the ocean, a lake, swimming pool, but Emmanuel takes a lot of showers. Number three, you've got to have what the Frenchies call a montage. You know what a montage is? It's a bunch of little pieces of film stuck together with some lame song to show two people falling in love. So you see them walking on the beach, holding hands, going to the carnival, eating barbecue ribs, buying a used car, holding up a 7-Eleven. You just see all this unrelated stuff mixed up together, and it goes by real fast while this lounge singer is singing a song like, your breasts are like giant sponges or something like that. That's the montage. So this movie has a montage with rickshaws and chopsticks and all that stuff that identifies it as Hong Kong. It has those little bonsai trees, those little midget trees that grow over there. And finally, any great Emmanuel movie must have a hooker school scene. Hooker school can be in a harem or a mobster's hideout or just on 42nd Street or something, but it's someplace where a madam teaches Emmanuel all the ancient secrets of sex so she can be forced into white slavery and used and abused by slime balls before she gets saved in the last five minutes, of course. So, anyhow, I'm not really giving away the plot of this movie, but it does have these classic elements in it. If you get bored, remember, only two more nights. I mean, if you're a true Iron Man, you'll tough it out with me. We have no dead bodies in this one. We have 36 naked breasts, and we have one motor vehicle chase. Three and a half stars. Way too much plot getting in the way of the story, or else it would have been a solid four stars. Emmanuel in the Orient. Check it out, and then I'll be back after it's over to discuss the cinematography and production design. I do believe you'll enjoy this one. Oh yeah, there's one, there's one other standard element in this one. A whole bunch of scenes of planes landing, planes taking off, planes flying through the air, boats leaving, boats arriving, taxis arriving, taxis leaving. All the people in these movies jump in and out of vehicles all the time. I don't know what it means, but it, it wouldn't be an Emmanuel movie unless they did that. Actually, it probably means the flick was 12 minutes too short. This sucker is rated R. You know what I like about that movie? The part where she loses her virginity. 
She keeps saying to this obviously horny guy, no, I'm engaged to be married. No, I must honor the traditions of my culture. No, my father would not allow it. No, I cannot even kiss you without losing my dignity. And then he has to stay overnight on the island, and she just suddenly comes through the door, whips her robe off, and pretty soon they're aardvarking all over the room. And then the next day she goes to that astrologer and says, oh, no, have I done the right thing? And remember what the astrologer says? The wind has opened the gate of your garden. Yeah, and I wanted to say, I think it was a little bit more than the wind, honey. Anyhow, that was Chai Lee starring in that movie, and that was the first in a series of one Emmanuel movies for her. And like I said, they didn't even, they didn't even call her Emmanuel in that script. Her name was Amy Wong or something. And this is the only Emmanuel movie I've ever seen where Emmanuel is a doctor, so something is going on there. I don't know what it is. All right, we got two more nights left in Emmanuel week, and they are the best two nights, really. Tomorrow night, the flick is Emmanuel in Bangkok, one of the real early ones, starring Laura Gimser, who is my favorite of all the Emmanuels, except for one, and she is my special guest on Friday night when we'll be showing Emmanuel 5. Monique Gabriel, Miss Emmanuel 5 herself, will be right here in the studio, along with the director of Emmanuel 5, Mr. Steve Barnett, so be sure to watch for that. I've had Monique on before on my regular show on the movie channel, and you never know just what she's going to say, and even more important, you can never be sure just what she's going to wear. So <laughs> you'll enjoy that, and uh, that's it for me. Joe Bob Briggs with another heartwarming night of Emmanuel Week, the favorite cable program of Jesse Helms. See you guys later. Whew. May the wind open the gate of your garden. I mean that.